Castle Field in Manchester, located at the southwest end of Deansgate, is the industrial and Roman heart of Manchester. It is home to a Roman fort, networks of canals, old mills, new bars, sophisticated restaurants and a wide range of accommodation. Designated an urban heritage park, Castlefield is an excellent place to begin exploring Manchester. A walk among the lovingly restored Victorian houses along the old canals or through the reconstructed Roman fort is time well spent. Other interesting tourist attractions include the Castlefield Art Gallery, with its exhibitions of contemporary art, and Bridgewater Hall, home to the Halley Orchestra and first class concerts. The Castlefield Bowl hosts regular pop and classical concerts and is also worth a visit. Imperial War Museum North is a museum in the Metropolitan Borough of Trafford in Greater Manchester, England. One of five branches of the Imperial War Museum, it explores the impact of modern conflicts on people and society. Explore the timeline from the First World War to the present day, immerse yourself in the big picture show, discover the forgotten histories of service personnel and civilians and see conflict through the eyes of artists. This is a place where every object on display, every contemporary work of art and every exhibition is designed to live long in the memory. Perched on the banks of the River Irwell, Manchester Cathedral, officially the Cathedral and Collegiate Church of St. Mary, St. Denis, and St. George, dates mostly from 1422 to 1506 and was raised to cathedral status in 1847. Particularly attractive are its chapels on both sides of the nave and choir. It was built between 1486 and 1508 with further additions and alterations in almost every subsequent century. Of particular note are the choir stalls, with some of the most richly decorated misericords in the country. St. John's Chapel is the chapel of the Manchester Regiment, and the Little Lady Chapel has a wooden screen dating from 1440. The octagonal chapter house, built in 1465, has murals that include a figure of Christ in modern dress. Another religious site worth visiting, and something of a hidden gem in Manchester, is St. Mary's Catholic Church. Built in 1794 and located next to the historic Market Hall, it's also known locally as the Hidden Gem. But don't let the structure's rather plain exterior stop you from popping in for a look inside. Here, you'll find numerous fine Victorian carvings. Highlights include the marble high altar, statues of saints, and a unique expressionist-style Stations of the Cross. Home to two of Europe's top football teams, Man City and Man United, Manchester is a great place to pay homage to the country's favourite sport. First stop should be the National Football Museum. This football shrine features fascinating memorabilia related to the sport, including such gems as the very first rule book, as well as historic trophies and clothing. A variety of great short movies show the history of the sport, while fun hands-on, and feet-on, for that matter, displays provide plenty of additional entertainment for youngsters. Check their website for details of special events and programs. It's also worth paying a visit to one, or both, of the Manchester team's home stadiums. Manchester City's Etihad Stadium offers a variety of fun tour options, including behind-the-scenes and deluxe dinner tours. Old Trafford, home to Manchester United, offers guided tours that allow access to private boxes and the chance to tread the field itself. Cheatham's Hospital, just north of Manchester Cathedral, dates in part to 1422. Originally a residence for priests, it's now home to a music school and Chetham Library, the oldest public library in England. In continuous use since 1653, the library has more than 100,000 books, more than half of them printed before 1850. Cheatham's is also famous as the meeting place of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels during Marx's visit to Manchester. Guided tours are available.
Other libraries of note are the Manchester Central Library next door to the Town Hall, and the Portico Library, which houses the literary collection of Dalton and Jewell, founders of the Manchester Literary and Philosophical Society. The Victorian John Rylands Library, now part of Manchester University, is also worth seeing for its many special collections, including medieval texts, a Gutenberg Bible, and collection of early printing by William Caxton. The Manchester Art Gallery possesses one of the largest art collections in Britain outside of London. The gallery includes works by the Pre-Raphaelites, Flemish masters of the 17th century, French Impressionists, including Gauguin, Manet, and Monet, and German artists such as Max Ernst. There are also pieces from well-known English artists, including Stubbs, Constable, and Turner. The gallery's impressive sculpture collection includes works by Rodin, Mayal, Jacob Epstein, and Henry Moore. The imposing facade of the Neo-Gothic Town Hall, 1877, graces pedestrianized Albert Square, and the tower offers excellent panoramic views of the city. Inside, the council chamber merits special attention, along with the cycle of Ford Maddox Brown murals that depict the history of the city. While there, visit the Free Trade Hall, opened in 1951. The centrally located Manchester Central Convention Complex, one of the largest such sites in England, hosts many musical performances throughout the year. The building is unique in that it was constructed amid the former Victorian Railroad Station on Windmill Street. The People's History Museum is the national centre for the collection, conservation, interpretation, and study of material relating to the history of working people in Britain. Located in a former pumping station, the museum showcases the history of British democracy and its impact on the population, as well as extensive collections of artifacts relating to trade unions and women's suffrage. Two other museums close by are the Manchester Jewish Museum, with its collection dealing with the city's Jewish community, and the Museum of Transport, with its many old buses and other vehicles belonging to the city transport services. Covering some 600 acres, Heaton Park is the biggest park in Greater Manchester and one of the largest municipal parks in Europe. Heaton Hall, built in 1772, lies in the very heart of the park and although not all of it is open to the public, it remains an impressive sight. Some buildings, such as the charming Orange Tree, are open seasonally to the public. The park has been extensively restored and retains many of its original buildings and vistas. Sports enthusiasts will enjoy its 18-hole golf course, driving range, mini putt, and tennis courts, while families can explore the boating lake, animal farm, woodlands, ornamental gardens, observatory, and adventure playground. There's even a volunteer-run tramway and museum. Platt Hall, an elegant Georgian house built in 1764 and now part of the Manchester Art Gallery, presents an excellent overview of English fashion and costume from 1600 to the present day. It is perhaps the only collection to rival London's Victoria and Albert Museum. Strengths of the museum include its many examples of everyday dress, with the gallery of costume containing one of the largest collections of costumes and accessories in Britain. Manchester's educational precinct, encompassing the University of Manchester, 1851, includes a variety of institutes and halls of residence. The university can claim three Nobel Prize winners, Ernest Rutherford, 1871-1939, who laid the foundations of modern atomic physics, physician James Chadwick, who in 1932 proved the existence of the neutron, 
and Sir John Cockcroft, 1897-1967, one of the leading physicists in British and Canadian atomic research. Housed in the University, the Whitworth Art Gallery is famous for its collections of British watercolours, drawings, prints, modern art, and sculpture, along with the largest textile and wallpaper collections outside London. Also close by is the Manchester Museum, with its extensive scientific collections and Egyptian exhibits.